Ever notice, no matter how hard you try by picking out the cutest, trendiest outfits, wearing the most chic eye makeup look, getting the most expensive Brazilian blowout, and working your butt off for that, well, lifted butt, you still feel like there's something slightly missing. You still feel like you are not pretty enough. Perhaps it's because of the consecutive 10 posts of gorgeous girls on Instagram you scrolled through who each had at least three qualities you wish for. Perhaps it's because a designer brand released a new purse you have yet to own. Perhaps it's because when you went to bed at night with the newly advertised regenerating sleeping mask, you woke up a little bit more refreshed, but only to realize that the beauty standard changed again. And just like that, you are no longer pretty enough according to the standard. Hi! Today's video is inspired by a feeling commonly shared by a lot of girls, including myself from time to time, and it is a feeling of being not pretty enough. I often like to reflect upon this insecurity and really try to come to your understanding of what are some of the factors that contributed to it. Other than the fact that we are all human and are made up of our each unique experiences, I noticed that there are some commonly shared experiences as to why we may have fallen prey to this mindset. And you may have guessed it, social media and actually consumerism play a huge role in planting the seed of feeling inadequate in women's heads. So in this video, let's talk about how beauty standards are formed, how they contradict one another across cultures, and tying this all back to how consumerism drives profit off of induced insecurities. Lots to chat through. Let's dive in. A princess too. What kind of a princess are you? Uh, Do you have magic hair? No. Magic hands? No. Do animals talk to you? No. Were you poisoned? No. Cursed? No. Kidnapped, Kidnapped or enslaved? How beauty standards are formed. Beauty standards have always been extremely prevalent throughout human history. They determine what is quote unquote beautiful from body shape to facial proportions to height to weight. Many scholars have sought to explain why they exist, yet there seems to be very little consensus due to the complexity of the construct. From evolution, capitalism, race, to social media, there's an ongoing list of influences over these ideals. In the article, Perception and Deception, Human Beauty and the Brain by Daniel Yarosh, a researcher in behavioral sciences. It deconstructed beauty standards as a human nature to seek reproductive health in others, but also explains that people tend to deceive others by using clothing, makeup, and other methods to seem more attractive. So why do beauty standards change all the time? Is it because we evolved so much as a species that we identify new reproductive health metrics? even though beauty standards at times are arguably not too healthy? Looking through the lens of culture might help answer this. How culture makes something ugly. It's not intuitive how beauty standards will almost always be different from what the majority of people look like until we make a comparison between Western and Eastern beauty standards. Coming from a background of having grown up in both cultures, I have experienced waves of culture shocks of what each culture finds attractive and how even though beauty is the common goal across different cultures, what beauty could look like is vastly different and both Western and East Asian countries have very unattainable beauty standards. Let's start with some of the traits that are deemed super attractive in the Western world right now that people spend thousands and thousands of dollars to lean closer to yet are deemed deemed unattractive or weird in Asian cultures, starting with body type. Western culture, or specifically North American culture, prefers curvy women. The curvier, the better, which to some extent resembles the natural body types of African descent and is not natural to the majority of the Caucasian population in the West. And started the whole BBL epidemic, introduced a variation of filler procedures, and a series of new potential death causes. Asian culture, on the other hand, of the spectrum of normality 
idolizes slim figures. You'll never find a girl group member who has the physique of Kim Kardashian. But even though BBLs and fillers might be out of the game for achieving the ideal body shape, the underweight look puts a toll on the health of girls as well. Even the celebrities and idols themselves, who very much embody the ideal beauty within the Eastern culture, cannot hide the price they paid for achieving the unrealistic standards as they often faint on stage. And then skin tone. This is where the pattern of consumerism starts to trick in. Even though most people in Western countries tend to have fairer skin, a tan is what everyone goes after as beautiful. And this made tanning an entire industry on its own. Or did the industry make this beauty standard? On the flip side, in Eastern countries where people generally have colored skin tones, the beauty ideal has always been fairer skin. Even drawing back to history, historical paintings of royal mistresses and women considered beauty icons have extremely pale complexions. This, of course, drove another booming market for skincare and SPFs. For skin brightening and lightening instead of tanning, the complete reverse of Western beauty standards. And not to mention styles of eye makeup. The controversial yet popular fox eye makeup in the West with a more slanted and almond-shaped look is deemed by a lot of people as racially insensitive to Asians due to the resemblance of Asian eyes. Whereas for Asians, it's a lying silkworm under eye highlight that's supposed to enlarge the eyes for a more Eurocentric look. And we might as well talk about nose jobs. In the West, where people naturally have higher nose bridges, they like to reduce the bridge. Whereas in the East, where people naturally have flatter nose bridges, they like to add fillings to heighten their nose. Here, we start to see a very interesting pattern. The beauty hallmark that each culture goes after is generally not genetically natural to the people. If you're born with pale skin, you want to be tanned. If you're born with tanner complexions, you want to brighten. No wonder we never feel like we are pretty enough. The ideal beauty is always constructed on what's usually not naturally achievable. What in the world made us want to chase after what we don't have? Capitalism and marketing. People always coming at me like, oh my God, you're gonna look really plastic. You're gonna look fake. But that's exactly how I wanna look, plastic and fake. Beauty standards, a marketing construct built on insecurities. Since the early Renaissance images of women, beauty is associated with status. What you notice in terms of fashion and beauty is that the forehead hair was plucked and you have a very, very high forehead, which represented elevated status. Capitalism and beauty in the US dates back to the 1920s. Conceptions of what a new woman could be was formed by the emergence of feminized mass consumption as beauty products came to symbolize female freedom and Western political emancipation. Mass consumerism allowed for the ideal of a quote-unquote beautiful woman to be appropriated for commercial and political consumption. To a large extent, beauty standards are made up by humans, applied to humans, and feed off of the very insecurities of humans. I am currently working a 9 to 5 in marketing and a concept that a lot of brands are super familiar with is demand generation. Where the power of marketing is in the ability to create a demand for something you didn't know you wanted or needed until you do. This exact... This exact concept applies to beauty standards. If the majority of the population in the Western society has fair skin, it's counterproductive to try to generate demand for something that people already have. Nobody really needs a brightening serum because they already have fair skin. It's like trying to sell ice in Alaska. Scarcity increases the value of a commodity but also a trait. So what happens instead is that after billions and billions of ad budget, where the image of tan becomes associated with beauty, we have now generated a demand for a trait that is not natural to the market and can bring billions and trillions of dollars in return in trying to achieve the look. There's nothing in... I'm moving soon, so... There's nothing intrinsically wrong with demand generation, especially if the product is beneficial for the general population, like toothpaste. But the issue with a lot of marketing in the beauty industry is that because it profits off of insecurities, it's very lucrative to generate 
insecurities. The use of insecurities to make women feel not thin enough, pretty enough, young enough, glam enough is deeply ingrained in beauty advertising. Women and men have been sold the idea that if I just get that lip gloss, that facial, that laser treatment, then I will feel like I am attractive. Then I will finally feel like I am enough. With the inundation of ads, media, information intentionally trying to make us feel insecure by showing us the quote-unquote norm as what we as a general population does not look like. Unfortunately, we can't just shut off these insecurity traps constantly bombarded at us unless if we decide to literally move under a rock. But what we can do is to remember that there is nothing intrinsically wrong with not looking like the poster child of beauty that is also changing basically every five seconds with the trend cycle shortening at lightning speed and i think chasing after what the general consensus on what beauty is is also fine but it is crucial to recognize that it is a facade of consumerism and then make a judgment true to your preferences with the awareness. So that is all I wanted to cover today. Beauty standards is truly an interesting topic and whether we like it or not, all of us are impacted by it one way or another. Let me know your thoughts on beauty standards in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram to join my growth journey. I'll see you next week, bye. the end.